What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So I know a lot of you guys have been putting up with the last couple of videos with the side-by-side -side content, but today we're back in the garage talking about the Supra. Now a lot of you guys have been asking me about this particular part on my car, and that is the intake manifold. Yes, it's a forward-facing intake manifold. It's all custom, and I'm going to show you exactly what I did to get it to fit on the car. So those of you that are new to the channel, my Supra here is a 7MGE T, so it's an NAT conversion or whatever. So it's a turbocharged, naturally aspirated motor, and I've gotten rid of the intake manifold that goes up over the top of the motor because it's just really irritating to deal with like intercooler piping and all that kind of stuff, and it's just as a pain. So I decided to go with the full forward-facing intake manifold, which is completely custom. So my buddy and I, we put this thing together, and it fits perfect. This was a total guess before we uh, even measured anything. I just got the pieces, and we just welded together, and it fits perfect. So here you can see, this is the XS Power Sports Plenum. So this is actually a kit for the, I guess they advertise it for the IS300 with the 2JZ GE in it. And this is supposed to just bolt right onto the uh, 2JZ runners on the IS300. But in my case, we took the 7M cast runners and we just basically welded them right to the plenum. So we had to do a little bit of prep work and it was a little bit of a trick to weld the cast to the straight sheet of aluminum, but we got it to work out just fine. Like I said, we didn't really measure anything. We just got it and just sent it. I couldn't really move too much forward or back because I wanted all the pre-existing holes to match up with the runners. Each hole lines up perfect. They were, I think a little bit off, but after we welded these on here, went in with a carbide bit and we just opened them up. So. All I did on this was use the bottom runners. So you actually have, I think, just the two sets. So you have this one and then you have the one that goes up to the intake, like actual the stock plenum up there. So I just used the uh, the lower runners and that was it. I didn't have to fabricate or change anything on this part here, it just bolts right to the motor. We bolted those on, set this on here, kind of placed it where we wanted it to and then we tacked it in place and then pulled everything off. And you can see here, it's within, you know, a couple inches of the brake booster. He like a glove. Fits just fine there, not even close to the firewall. I didn't have to change any of the heater core hoses back there at all. And everything seems to fit just fine. I've been running this setup on my car for quite a while. It's been several years. I want to say like, it's like three or four years. And I've been currently running it on the 550cc injectors, stock MAF, distributor, all that stuff. Basically just threw the intake manifold on and sent it and it was just fine. Air fuel mixture was great on the wide band. Everything looked pretty good. Wide open throttle. It was 11s ish around there and idle it was 14.7, but I did have to mess with the fuel a little bit. So because it's not, I can't tune the stock ECU with the fuel pressure regulator. I had to turn the fuel pressure down quite a bit to compensate for that. But then I'd have problems up top at wide open throttle. So I almost had to run the car a little rich at idle, which was fine. So at, at idle was 14.7 if it, the fuel was good. But when I start to give it a little bit more fuel than that, then I was in like the 12-ish range. So it would kind of idle a little rough, but not horrible. And you could, you could definitely smell the gas. I mean, it was pretty rich, but it ran just fine. And it didn't foul up plugs or anything. I've, I would check the plugs pretty regularly and it wasn't bad. So for those of you out there like that'll never work, that intake manifold does not work on the stock ECU. It does, I promise. Like I said, been running that for a while. with no issues. So at actually one point I was running 20 ish pounds of boost and not tuned. I know I'm going to hear it in the comments already. It was a learning experience. I didn't damage anything, but it was definitely not safe. It was not the way to go. It felt really good. It was a really good amount of boost and it was very responsive, but not ideal because I wasn't tuning it. I turned it back down. Like I said, I think the last time I ran this car before starting to mess with all the ECU stuff, I was about eight pounds of boost with those 550cc injectors and didn't have any issues. So enough about that. You guys are wanting to know what you need to do to get this work on your car. 
a lot of you guys have reached out. You've messaged me asking me exactly what I've done here to get all this stuff to fit. And it's no secret. I'm not going to hide anything from you guys. I'd love to see more of this style of forward facing intake manifolds and other Supras. So please feel free to copy this. This isn't like patent pending. Okay. Just, I want you guys to use this information for yourselves and hopefully get your cars running the way you want it to. Like I said, excess power sports. I'll put a link in the description below for this particular, uh, plenum here. It does not come with the throttle body, so you'll need to get that separate. I'll also throw the link in the description below. But the things you're going to need to do, so I did have to add this little plate here. We added some material up on this top part here to add, or well, to have enough material to tap these to put in the um, barbed fittings there. And then obviously I had to tap this for the brake booster. So I kind of kept everything the same as far as the like factory intake manifold goes. I want everything to stay relatively the same. Now, a lot of you guys have asked me about the throttle cable. This is out of a 1993 Toyota Camry. It bolts right up to the gas pedal, no problem. There's a little plate that you've got to pull off and then it will literally bolt right onto the gas pedal for the Supra. So there, there's no cutting or grinding or any of that stuff. And then you just have to fish it through the firewall. Now it's ideal to weld this onto here. So that's just like what's hold, hold the tension to the cable. But I just utilized the bolt that's coming off the head here and it kind of just made my own little bracket, bent it around, notched it. And then I just dropped this guy in here with the two nuts and then tensioned it until I had pretty good tension on that. I mean, it's it's perfect. It's been running like that for a little while now with no issues. I've had to adjust it a few times just as things have warmed up and whatnot. But then it hooks right into the the blade here for the throttle body, and I haven't had any any problems with that. So works pretty good. Again, 1993 Toyota Camry. I'll put the I'll put a link in the description for that as well. So all this stuff is pretty easy to find. Now for the throttle body. This is a 90 millimeter throttle body. You can see I've got two welds here. So if you buy this plenum, it's already going to have this four bolt flange on here and they claim it's for a 90 millimeter throttle body, but it didn't quite work with this billet one that I got. This is uh, eBay. So is this, you can get both those off eBay. Quality on the throttle body is not the greatest. Obviously you get what you pay for. This thing was like a hundred bucks. I just, at the time wanted to make sure it all worked and actually ended up working just fine. It is billet. It is pretty like a decent piece, but the hardware is not the best. So when you're looking at the blade for the uh, butterfly valve, it's, it's not that nice, but it'll work. I'm not too worried about it. I pulled the two screws out for the, the plate and I just, uh, blue Loctite them in. So I don't have to worry about them getting sucked into the intake manifold and causing problems. Now I chose this throttle body because on eBay, it shows that you can use the stock Toyota throttle position sensor, which you can. Now the only problem with this particular throttle body is it rotates opposite of what the throttle position sensor reads. So this is going to rotate this way, whereas the stock throttle position sensor goes the other way. So what I did, and I don't know why this worked, it was like total voodoo magic. I can't explain it. I don't know why. Hopefully it works for you guys. If not, I'll show you what wires you need to swap to basically read the sensor backwards. But I preloaded the sensor. It's kind of it's kind of hard to put everything in there, but I preloaded the sensor and I pushed it onto the little blade that comes on that comes with the throttle body. Preloaded it, pushed it on there, put the two screws in there. So basically what it was doing, if you were to be able to look at it on a computer, if you had like a way to plug it in and look at a computer on the screen, it would show that on there at idle, it was reading 100 percent throttle. Then when you give it gas, it would go from 100% down to zero. So it's basically reading backwards, which in my opinion would throw the car off. So you would basically be giving it too much fuel because it'd be reading the throttle position. I don't know. For whatever reason, it worked and it worked great. And it, I ran that way for a long time. I don't know why. I don't know if it's just looking at the some sort of movement or something on the sensor. It, it read fine. I, I don't actually know what it was reading, but it was working just fine. I would get a little bit of a hiccup, so I did have to kind of adjust it. There's two little screws here and I had to kind of adjust it a little bit and center it onto this thing here. This is just, this is my nitrous nozzle here, but it screws onto this little guy right here. And then there's the rod that goes through to this over here. So like I said, basically it was, it pulls this way towards the vehicle, whereas this sensor needs to read the opposite. So like I said, preloading it, pushing on, put the two screws on, and then it was good to go. Now, if you do it this way and it doesn't work and it starts giving you like weird issues like also your throttle spikes and your car is doing some weird stuff down here you have four wires now, it's kind of hard to see i'll try to get my phone down there best i can but you basically you have a blue with a red so going from the front of the vehicle to the back blue with red solid brown yellow with a blue line and then white with a red line 
the wires you need to swap to make sure it's reading opposite. So now on the ECU master, I swap the wires and on the ECU master, I can show as it sits right now, it shows 0%. And then I put the throttle on and it goes to 100%. You just need to swap the outside wire, the two outside wires. The yellow with the blue line, you actually don't need that. It doesn't really do anything. And well, it's not that it doesn't do anything, but it's not necessary for this application or for ECU mastering that stuff. For this case, blue with the red line, you'll want to swap with the white with the red line. The, uh, the solid brown one, you don't need to mess with that. So you'll swap those two wires and then that'll read opposite polarity of what it is stock. So again, I've tested that and I know for a fact it works perfect. On the ECU Master tuning software, like I said, it shows 0%. At idle, just sitting there with the car sitting as it is, it shows 0%. I apply throttle, and it goes from 0 to 100. And then you can adjust the, the amounts, whatever, in the tuning software to get that full 0 to 100%. So it takes a little bit of adjustment. So try that first. The way that the throttle position sensor wiring comes stock, just try that. So the, the preload, put it on there, Start it up, see if it works. If it's not working properly, swap those wires so you're reading opposite. This part's gonna be a little hard to see. I do have the idle air control valve. It's still in here. You can actually see kind of a part of it right back there. That's the hose for it. So it's basically like up on the factory intake manifold. It sits kind of in the front here. Now it's just up underneath this thing. So if you were to be able to see through this, you would see it screwed into the bottom of this. I haven't messed with any of that wiring. I just extended the wires so it would reach up underneath that part of it. Sounds like I need to mess with some of the wiring for the ECU Master standalone, but we'll get there eventually. So I do have that, it still is working. Factory ECU, that thing worked great. So I didn't have to change anything. The only thing I didn't do is I didn't run coolant through it. So there's no coolant coming from the motor through the idle air control valve and then back through. All that does is keep it from basically freezing. So it keeps the warm coolant running through it. So the sensor doesn't get, or the, so the valve doesn't get jammed up when it's really cold temperatures. I've been running it without the coolant going through it for a long time with no issues. Sounds like it cycles and everything just fine like it would from factory. And then with the throttle body, the 90 millimeter throttle body, it will come with an extra plate. So this is the plate right here. You can see it's welded on to the existing flange. So we were gonna cut this off and weld it on there and that might be ideal. We just kind of got lazy and just welded it right to it. You can see the new welds. I used some Toyota bolts that were long enough to go through that didn't go all the way through this. Use some uh, blue Loctite, got those in there and haven't had any issues. I did have to make a gasket. So I just got the gasket material from the local auto parts store and that seems to be working just fine. Now for the alternator, you can see that's all the way down there. You obviously will not be able to run a forward facing intake manifold with the alternator right here, unless you do some sort of a funky design where it kind of comes around it, but that seems like a giant headache. So you've got to ask yourself, do I really want AC? Because your AC condenser, your AC pump, AC condenser sits right here. You'll basically just need to get rid of that because on this side is your power steering and the alternator needs to sit right where it's at. I will also put in the description below for the alternator relocation bracket. It's like a billet bracket. It's really nice. It just bolts right onto the front of the motor. There's a couple little spacers. I had to get some different hardware from the, just like from Home Depot and because the hardware just didn't quite work that came with the bracket. So, and then it just bolts down there on the bottom and then the front cover here. So not a big deal, pretty easy to work with. You don't have to extend any of the wiring for any of that stuff. And it's pretty straightforward. Like you can still pretty much get up underneath and around the intake manifold just fine, but it does look pretty good. I'm probably gonna get a powder coat. You can see it's kind of lost some of its chrome, the shininess to it, just cause it's been sitting under here. I mean, I drove this car a bunch. So I'll probably get it powder coated, maybe black or something just to make it look nice and clean. Or maybe I'll polish it up, I don't know. But there you go. So for this intake manifold setup, if you have your pre-existing runners or if you have an extra set like I do, these were not the ones that came on my car. It's from another another Supra, another 7M. Everything together here combined, I think that was a hundred bucks for the throttle body, hundred bucks for the plenum, and then just time to weld it right on there. So. 200 bucks for a forward facing intake manifold is pretty sweet. Oh, and then I guess minus the price for the cable and whatnot, but just little things here and there. So I would say, I don't know, 300 bucks for a forward facing intake manifold. That's pretty sweet. It really didn't take that much like to, I didn't have to cut anything. I didn't have to bend anything. I didn't have to like clearance stuff, like everything fit. Oh, the only, the only other thing that I forgot about was the EGR stuff. So I'll try to get a, a video of this. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll show you right here. All right, well, I can't get it on camera. I'm just trying to mess with that. But behind this fitting here for the fuel stuff, down below that, there is a little 
block off plate. I, I try to get to it. You can't see it. I'll just put a picture below here. But there's a little two bolt. There's actually two studs that come out. You'll need to put a block off plate on there. Drift Motion has a kit you can get. It's like a billow block off plate set. I'll put a link in the description. You can get that. That'll block off the two EGR ports. Then you'll run risk of not passing emissions. But you should be fine with all that stuff. It's, it's not a big deal. That's been an ongoing issue with me for a long time. But you will need to do that if you are planning on doing a forward facing intake manifold. Well, that's pretty much it, guys. It's pretty straightforward. Once you start deleting a lot of the stuff off the motor, like emission control stuff, all that crap, once you start getting rid of it, it's actually pretty simple. There's not a lot to deal with on here. Make sure you give yourself enough vacuum ports for to run your like your blow valve, your map sensor if you're going to run a stock EC or a aftermarket ECU, and just make sure you have all your ports and everything that you need, and then. Yeah, you should be good to go. It's pretty straightforward. I don't know. There are some throttle bodies out there that they claim come with a Toyota throttle position sensor. When I ordered mine, it said that it came with that and it didn't. So if you do get with that, I don't know if the wiring is the same. I can't test to that. But I do know if you use the factory throttle position sensor, it does work. I mean, I'll put as many videos as you want of me driving the car with this setup on. I know it works. So might not be ideal. Like I said, you want to get it tuned. Always get your car tuned. That's a given. Especially when you're pushing more power, more fuel, all that stuff. Like you need to adjust timing and fuel. Like I understand that. But if you're like me and you're on a budget and you're trying to save some money, but you're like, man, that looks really sweet. It will work. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's super quick, super straightforward. It wasn't like a full install. This is not difficult to figure out. Okay. Like once you have the intake manifold, it literally just goes right on. You don't have to mess with anything. You don't have to cut anything. Like. It just goes straight on. It's perfect. So I am planning on making a couple of these. I've got to get my welder set up. I've got my welder there, but not quite up and running yet. I have enough material to make three of these. If you guys are interested in this, I will make them. Just message me. I don't know what the time frame's like, but if you're like, oh man, I really like that setup, whatever, just hit me up. I'll respond to you. I'll let you know where we're at with that. I just need to sit down and get them knocked out. I will probably leave the plenum and this, the, I'll obviously do the 7M runners to the plenum, but I will leave the throttle body flange on there and I'll let you guys deal with that. So if you want to run some other throttle body, like a drive-by wire throttle body, like I'll let you mess with that. I'm not going to weld any special flanges on. Just let me know. Let me know if you guys are, are wanting this. I don't know what the price is. I don't know. I will message you, but if you are interested, let me know. Uh, that being said, guys, thanks for the support. Like always, I greatly appreciate it. You guys that are subscribing, commenting, liking the videos, even if it's something that like can-am stuff that you're not interested in but you're sitting through it i greatly appreciate it more super stuff to come i have been back and forth a lot of tuning stuff right now and there's there's so much going on that i can't even record all of it because there's just like little details trying to go through and check all the boxes and adjusting things once i get there i will share with you guys my tuning process the first start the running all that going through and getting it tuned setting up the anti-lag oh, all the good stuff i'm so excited but we're we're still a little ways out we'll get there guys don't worry it's coming we're just things that you guys you know some of you guys would probably be interested in seeing that but it literally is like trial and error trying this thing doesn't work okay let's try this i, I just don't want to film all that stuff so once i get it working i will share with you guys what you need to do to set up ecu master on your supra and not go into all the details and just say hey check this box do this fuel if you're doing this do this and it'll run and it'll be fine and then get off to the tuner because I'm not a tuner, so your local tuners can do that for you. But there it is, looking looking so good. Can't wait to get this thing out on the road and get it racing. There's a couple races coming up in spring that I'd like to maybe attend. So we're on a little bit of a time crunch, but we will get there. So, but that being said, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Hey yo, the rain was steady pouring, heard the drops and drizzle meant to be Shelling in my crib, no doubt, peep the scenery Telephone rang, then it stopped before I could answer it I heard a knock at the door, so I answered it It was Jermaine, he had a little situation Beef up on the block, an the doctor led the confrontation He said these cats be acting hard on the block And they be pumping, waiting, holding, so Dwayne got shot Now see, Dwayne was just a knucklehead, but still with his cousin And I'd be wrong if I ain't helping when his beef, he gon' rush And he said, listen, listen